So yesterday we finally did have a retracement. It looks like we came down about 8%. And this was to be expected because that rising triangle actually failed right here. And we got a double top with a bearish divergence here on the RSI, sending us down for a healthy retracement to try to find some support. Right now it looks like we have found a little bit of support at basically exactly $23,000 just underneath it right now. And if we don't bounce and go to the upside from here, then I think we will probably be coming back down to retest this upward trending support line. If you look at the daily chart, this actually coincides perfectly with the 50 day moving average. And I think that that would be a really great level for us to come down to and ultimately turn into support before going back to the upside. But if we actually don't find that a support and we do break down below that, then as I've said a lot in the past, I think it would be really healthy for us to come back down and retest this 200 day moving average. After all, that would only be about a 20% decline from the top that we recently were at. And this is really healthy and pretty normal for a bull market or a bull trend. If we go back and look at the previous bull cycle, you can see that right before we started to take off significantly, we did have about a 20% dip before we actually went parabolic and made new all-time highs. Also, during the parabolic run, we also had a couple of other dips that were roughly about 20%, this one being 17.5%. And up here we had another one that was about 29%. So I would say that the average is about 20% that we have for retracements. And these are really healthy. And these basically just shake out a bunch of paper-handed pansies. Because if you can't hold on through a 20% decline with Bitcoin, then you basically just shouldn't be invested in Bitcoin because this is absolutely normal. This is a volatile asset. And this kind of volatility is to be expected. Hopefully, though, we will find some support here at the 50-day moving average being at about $22,500. And that'll actually only be about a 12.5% or 13% decline from the recent top, which, in my opinion, would be sufficient enough as a retracement to send us for another leg to the upside. But I would actually prefer if it does come back down for that 20% retracement and retest this 200-day moving average, turning it into support. This recent dip was probably caused by this core PCE coming in higher than expected at 0.6% with the expectation being 0.4%. This means that inflation is continuing to run high and this is really to be expected like I've said because the government isn't going to stop printing and there's really nothing that the Fed can do about that. Last week I was talking about the average price of gas, how it was starting to go back up. And probably everybody knows the situation with eggs because they've been about $8 for a dozen recently. But also, the milk chart looks pretty similar to the egg chart, and chicken doesn't look very much better. Not to mention bread. Bread is pretty much going parabolic also. So this is an obvious sign that inflation is continuing to run rampant, and I don't think there's anything that the Fed is going to be able to do about that, and they're definitely not getting inflation back down to 2% before they actually have to start turning the money printer back on. Right now, we've got about a 73% chance of another 25 basis point hike in the next meeting when which is in about 24 days and in may it looks like we have a 69 percent chance of another 25 basis point hike which is already higher than the terminal rate was expected to be at the beginning of the year in june it looks like there's a 56 percent chance of even another further 25 percent or 25 basis point rate hike and then in july there's a 45 percent chance that we might actually finally start to see that pause in the last meeting, the Fed said that they weren't basically planning to do any kind of rate cuts by the end of the year, and it looks like the CME Fed rates is basically trying to get that priced in, and it looks like we're not expecting any kind of cuts to be happening by the end of the year here. So we could definitely have some more downside to go in the stock market, and hopefully we will start to see Bitcoin do a decoupling, because as these higher interest rates continue to have a downward pressure on the markets and earnings, Hopefully people will start to look for alternative investments where they're not being pushed down by an earnings recession and Bitcoin could really be the only viable option or at least Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. The government isn't going to stop spending money and there's not really any way that they're going to increase their revenue if we do go into an earnings recession. So the Fed is going to have to supply all of this money and there's just nothing that they can do about that. Actually, I take that back. There might be something that they can do and that would be to roll out a CBDC. Because in that case, they could just program the money to expire on a certain date, or they could say that you can only spend it on certain approved items. Take this article, for example. This says that Britcoin's roadmap is revealed by UK Chancellor. No hoarding is allowed. 
It looks like Britain is going to be rolling out a CBDC called Britcoin because they obviously aren't very original. And one of the main rules is going to be that there's no hoarding allowed. That means that you can't save and get ready for retirement and you can't save for vacations or to buy a house. And if you don't think that the United States government is going to be rolling out something super similar, then you've got another thing coming. The only way that we're going to be able to escape this traditional finance system or the new finance system that they're trying to roll out is going to be to be invested in Bitcoin and other decentralized cryptocurrencies. Right now, the mainstream narrative is to tell you that this is all a scam and a Ponzi scheme because they don't want you to take the power back. Right now, it's going to represent the best opportunity to make life-changing wealth with cryptocurrencies. And after mainstream adoption happens, there might not be another opportunity like this in the future. So let me know in the comments, do you guys think that the Fed is actually going to be able to get inflation back under 2%? Or do you think that they're going to have to continue printing like they always do and Bitcoin is going to be the only means of escape? Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next time. Say bye, Abisu. Oh, hey, I was just being chased by a bear. Watch out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell too because I don't want you to miss out on any important updates. And check out this video. Oh crap, I gotta get out of here. Oh, yeah.